Hi everyone and welcome to the Hawaii Pacific Gerontological Society's November webinar. My name is Mapuana Ta'amu and I'm one of the board members for HPGS and chairperson for these webinars. I wanted to start by introducing you to the chat box available to us all. If you toggle around your screen, you'll see an icon of a chat bubble with the word chat under it. Click that button and you will enter the chat room where you'll be able to submit questions or comments throughout this presentation. Questions will be answered during and at the end of this webinar, so feel free to send in your thoughts, questions, and concerns regarding aging in place and reverse mortgages. Okay, so before we begin, I wanted to show you the HPGS web and, um, website so that you can access it later on. So you'll go on to www.hpgs.org. So this is our web, um, website, and I wanted to introduce you to our membership tab here. To become a member, um, you just go on to our website, check out our membership tab here at the bottom, you'll see click here to join or renew. And we are now accepting memberships for next year. So if you wanna get ahead and start renewing your membership, please feel free to. Different options here at the bottom. There are a few benefits that come with being a member. Um, for example, we have various rates for individuals, organizations, and associates. Um, also, we do monthly newsletters where members are welcome to submit articles to be published. There are free monthly webinars just like this one, and members are eligible to be a speaker. We have special invitations to general membership meetings, kupuna-related events and workshops, not just on Oahu, but on outer islands as well. Scholarships to help anyone of any age that are pursuing education in the field of gerontology. So if you wanna get more information about us, there on this membership tab, we have all of our information and the other benefits as well. And I also wanted to show you the webinars tab. So here are our webinars, upcoming, um, past, present. Let's keep scrolling to the bottom. We have Katie Rainey in December. Um, and at the bottom here, we have their click to watch. So all of our past webinars since January will be here. Um, and you can search from here. So tell your friends, hpgs.org, under our mm, webinars tab. You can search for more information there. Awesome. So let's get down to business. Today, um, we have gathered here to talk about aging in place and reverse mortgages. Thank you to those of you who have submitted personal questions that you have about reverse mortgage. We will get to those throughout this webinar. If you have any other questions, please do use the chat box to type them in. Um, any comments you have as well are welcome. Um, now, I'm sure many of you are either a senior who chose to age in place, maybe a caregiver that may need help to find funding for their parents' retirement, um, or maybe someone who would just like to learn more about reverse mortgages. Today, I've invited a special guest with lots and lots of knowledge in this area. Our special guest today is Percy Ihara. So Percy Ihara is a certified senior advisor in long-term care and the publisher of Generations Magazine. In 2010, Percy, a seasoned mortgage professional de dedicated to working with seniors and their families took over the reins of Generations Magazine to become publisher and managing editor. Generations Magazines provides seniors and their families important resource information on various issues facing our mature community, including topics such as healthcare, finances, legal matters, fitness, nutrition, and caregiving. Percy is also a reverse mortgage specialist with Retirement Funding Solutions, a home equity conversion mortgage, commonly known as reverse mortgage, it is a HUD program that is insured by the Federal Housing and Administration. Percy, thank you for being here today. Okay, are we all set? Yes. So anyway, uh, yeah, um, I've been doing working with aging since two, actually 2002 and uh, doing the reverse mortgage and realized very quickly, like in six months that I need to learn about aging because all my clients were over 62. So I took a deep dive into aging, uh, joined the American Society on Aging, uh, I believe HPGS. Uh, I have a lot of different experiences with um, working in this field. And I wanted to learn all the different aspects of aging. And so I, I took a deep dive by starting a uh, Kapuna Connections with, with Dr. Uh, Cullen Hayashida, then went on our, on our own to do today's Kapuna. 
I've done radio on KHVH and KHNR, and currently, and then took over Generations Magazine in 2010. So I've been very, very involved in aging in Hawaii, and it's something that I, uh, it's been a passion of mine. A lot of people that may know me um, realize that uh, we're all getting older. Uh, I've been versed on aging. And so I don't have the list here who's, who's uh, signed up or is on there. Um, but what I would like to start off with that uh, I'm, 40, I'm 59. I got in this business of 50, uh, 42. And over the years, as I've aged myself, uh, I come to realize that, boy, we're, we're, I'm 59 now. I still think I'm 39, like maybe a lot of you. And so I would start off with this little picture here. It uh, shows some of the iconic iconic TV shows back in the day. And by the way, if you want any of this information, any of these graphics, be more than happy to share them with this with you because it's actually kind of fun. Look at these pictures and see a lot of these shows. I know Mapuana is kind of young, but you may not recognize maybe half, if not hardly any of these shows. Uh, but it's kind of fun. Whenever I do these workshops, it's kind of fun to just kind of reminisce about back in the day and some of the favorite shows like uh, Get Smart, uh, Adam's Family, um, Batman, of course, uh, Mod Squad. Hogan's Hero was actually a very popular show that I loved. Um, the Monkeys, believe it or not, Mr. Ed. So it's just kind of good to reminisce about uh, all these old shows. If you're probably over, probably maybe 45 or maybe a little older, uh, you might uh, might see that. So anyway, we're going to talk about, uh, so Mapuana's topic was aging in place and how to fund retirement. And it's interesting, that's not actually the topic today, but um, we are going to talk about that because it's actually re very, very relevant. Uh, as recent as this morning, um, an article came out in the Wall Street Journal talking about how utilizing the reverse mortgage and retirement planning is going to be a big need and a big use uh, to fund retirement. So for a lot of you that are maybe are closer to retirement than maybe in Mapuana because she's just starting out, I'm 59. You know, no, I say that because when I was 42, I never really thought about retirement. I thought I was too young. I, mean, I had a 401k. Um, we had just bought a house and never thought about when I'm going to be 59, let alone 69 or 79. But it's something that we all need to start thinking about ourselves. I do monthly uh, workshops. I do a lot of speaking engagements around town uh, to all different various groups, uh, CPAs, financial advisors, realtors. Uh, I just recently started doing some things with the Bar Association because even the attorneys need to understand how to, how to navigate and guide their clients. And also, but the main thing is also to have the resources available to you. And so that's why Generations Magazine has been so important. You know, we've, um, we've, uh, uh, their only magazine distributed statewide through the library system. And it's something that's become a really big passion for us. And uh, this is the newest one. You'll be seeing about two and a half, three weeks. This just went to print. This is about giving and the gift of food. So we're going to feature uh, Hawaii Food Bank. We're going to also feature Aloha Harvest. If you never heard of them, great, great nonprofit. A lot of Kilo Meals on Wheels and Hawaii Meals on Wheels. So uh, kind of give you a little bit of a precursor to what's going to be coming up. Um, but our, our, our website I can't find it here. Our website, generations808.com, has a lot of resources there. As one of the sponsors of HBGS, uh, these webinars, it's really important to understand if you're dealing with clients yourself, you want to be a resource for all your clients. And so our website on the resources uh, has a lot of different, different uh, resource guides that will give you information about where to go, uh, adult day centers, uh, Alzheimer's support group meetings, we have a lot of neighbor island information, congregate dining sites, fall prevention, uh, farmer's market, because healthy eating is very important. And of course, all the libraries. Uh, we also have a lot of our past radio shows and TV shows here, um, which we're gonna just look, internet's kind of slow in here, but we'll get to it. So all our, t all our TV and radio shows are here on the far right. If you click on that, It'll take you to our archive of all our past uh, TV shows that we've done on OC16. Uh, we will bring out a new show in 2020 on one of their main channels. But the key thing is it's archived with all our past radio shows. And so uh, we've done many shows on Alzheimer's, dementia, 
We've done many shows on, this is really slow today, um, Medicare, we've done many caregiving, um, legal, financial, physical therapy, um, long-term care, veterans program from Humana, um, uh, the, the new law passed last year, Our Care, Our Choice. We did two actually special radio shows on that. So it's a great information for you to look at down the road. So anyway, just a precursor I wanted to give you about aging. Um, one of the things that I've done in the last uh, few months actually is really to, uh, where's my PowerPoint here? Mapuana, I can't find it now. There you go, there you go. So anyway, um, I just wanna give you a precursor because of aging because what I've realized during the 17 years now is that People don't look at aging as, as we did our old parents. Our parents back in the day called the greatest generation, my parents, uh, lived straight forward through life. Didn't do a whole lot of planning. Hopefully they did, but a lot of people did not. Uh, but they didn't really think about long-term care. Uh, less than 10% of the population have long-term care insurance. Uh, when I speak around town quite a bit, I always ask, what's your long-term care plan? And what, what really realize, people realize is that they need to do something. Hopefully it's not too late, but it's something I really, really need to talk about. When I got into this business 17 years ago, I saw the huge number of people in that age group of 50, 60, 70, 80, even 90 years old. And when I did more deeper dive, one of the key things that struck me through my research is that most of people's wealth, as you get older, is going to be the equity of the home. So what does that mean? You're going to retire. Hopefully your husband and wife, couple, may have a pension. But today about 90% of people do not have a pension. Uh, going forward, they stopped pensions probably 25 years ago. So you have a 401k, and that's about it. You have Social Security, so those two things. But what people don't realize, the biggest problem and the biggest issue that seniors are facing today, if you ask seniors in general, what is the biggest worry? The biggest worry is running out of money. It used to be long-term care, but today people realize that they're going to run out money before they need long-term care. And so when I took a deep dive into uh, retirement planning and how to fund retirement, I would tell you probably a good 70 to 80% of the people today, if not more, are living on Social Security only. And that's something that people got to realize that when they retire, hopefully they have a financial advisor. When they retire, they really have to understand that you know we're gonna live out longer. So in Hawaii, I just heard a recent statistic: Hawaii's national average, Hawaii's average life expectancy is 87.3 months, 87 years, three months. When I looked at it last five years ago, is about 86. It's going up. Probably by 2025, it may be it may be as high as 90 because we're living a lot longer. And so I I, I didn't want to stop real quick. If you look at the far right, my PowerPoint presentation. It says retirement funding solutions, a mutual of Omaha bank company. Uh, we just switched over two weeks ago. I was actually in Omaha, Nebraska two weeks ago. We just uh, switched over to mutual of Omaha insurance division. So we're no longer a bank. We're a banker, but under the insurance umbrella of mutual of Omaha. So th those of you that may be my age or maybe a little bit younger may remember the uh, mutual of Omaha iconic in the first animal show and actually uh, Marlon Perkins, uh, Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. And so I always, I always kind of point back to Mopwana because those of you maybe under 35 or even 30 probably never heard of it. If you Google that, they're still around. It's um, in a grainy video of Marlon Perkins talking about, here we are today in Africa, talking about some animal. But if you ever go to Omaha, they have one of the best zoos in the country. It's them in San Diego Zoo are the two of the best in the country. But so I mentioned we'll be called Mutual of Omaha Mortgage uh, going forward uh, in about another week or so. So anyway, when people look at retirement, hopefully you have a financial advisor. If you're doing it by yourself, I still would recommend you, it's hard to really read on the line about retirement. Get face to face with a financial advisor and really start talking about it 20, 30, 40 years out. What is your retirement going to be like? And when I do my presentations to mostly seniors, I say, listen, more people spend more time planning a vacation to Vegas than they do their retirement planning. And it's so true. And people laugh about it, but it's 
something that I see every day and people look at me and say, listen, I need to talk to you about long-term care or I need to talk about retirement planning or I need to be talk to you about, I ran out of, I'm running out of money and I have $50,000 left in my bank account and I'm thinking I'm going live, to live another 10 to 15 years. So that's something that I really need to think about. So we call the three L's of retirement when you're considering retirement. So you want to consider this, I would guesstimate talking to a financial advisor, maybe in their 50s, if not earlier, uh, but have a plan and start really talking about it. Longevity, uh, will I have enough money to meet my basic living needs? Because now today, as you know, Social Security can go online or once, I think once every five years, they'll send you in the mail. Like I got one recently, because I'm probably going to be turning 60 in a couple months. What my Social Security retirement income is going to be if I retire at 62 or the full retirement age of 70, and then, you know, you can get 136% at 72, how much that income is going to be per month guaranteed by Social Security. So whether Social Security, Social Security has money or not in uh, 20, 30 years, that's another conversation. But will you have enough money to meet your basic needs? And really the basic needs is going to be housing. Are you going to be renting at that time? Or are you going to be uh, owning a home? And uh, you to continue living in the home. And it's really important to understand that because people have, hopefully you don't have a mortgage payment. That's one of the things I, when I talk to families, you, you got to retire with no debt. That's the biggest hurdle we see today going forward. When people call me or when I get referred from a financial advisor or a state planning attorney, you know, my client's running out of money and he still has a mortgage payment. And that's probably one of the number one reasons why people look at the reverse mortgage. But, you know, I put the reverse mortgage on the side because it's all about aging in place. If you want to stay in your home, how are you financially going to be able to, excuse me, how are you financially going to be able to stay in your home when you have repairs? Uh, uh, sorry, I got some of my eye here. Uh, repairs, or if you live in a condominium, uh, if you have a maintenance fee, uh, for couples especially, when one spouse passes away, because it will happen, What's the retirement income left over from the remaining spouse? Because of the two social securities, you lose the lower of the two. So you keep the higher of the two. Is that money going to be enough to pay your maintenance fee? And unfortunately, as you understand maintenance fees and condominiums, that only goes up. So something to really start understanding that and plan out, I'm 59 when I'm 65, 69, 75, 80, 85, hopefully 90. What's life going to be like if I want to age in place? Because aging in place, I've been saying this for many, many years, those three words are going to become key to you. But the key is going to be, how do we do that? It's hard for me to think now what I'm going to be like at 80 or even 90, but I will have the same things. I'm going to have health insurance, Medicare. Uh, I bought long-term care insurance, so I have long-term care insurance premium that I have to pay every month. We have property tax, car insurance, homeowner's insurance. So what's that cash flow going to be like? So they really think we are going to live a lot longer than we expected. And by the way, if you do your own research like I, we've, the world has never lived this long, never in the history of this world. You know, when Social Security started in 1935, um, we, never, we didn't think it lived past 70. Uh, when Medicare started, we didn't think, you know, you're going to pass the past 70. So it's something to really think about the basic, I'm talking about basic needs now. I mean, I've been, we haven't got a conversation about long-term care or caregiving. So something really to think about. Those are, that's the first L. Second L is lifestyle. Will I have enough money to maintain my standard of living? So if you like to travel, uh, if you have an expensive hobby, like let's say motorcycle racing or golf or, you know, uh, playing different sports, it's really important. Can you maintain that standard of living? Uh, do you have a nice, do you like have a nice Lexus or a car? Um, will you be able to maintain this, this condom, nice condominium or this beautiful house where I have a yard man, a pool guy? You know, uh, it's really important to understand there's going to be certain things in your life that are going to cost money to re- maintain this lifestyle. Do you continue to give uh, financially to, or donate money to nonprofits? Um, do you like to still not wear nice clothes? Do you like to dress up? Uh, it's really important. Lifestyle is very important. You have a boat. Um, like I said, golf traveling, Vegas traveling, or it's really big. 
and it's something that really we understand budget that every year or twice a year how often you go to figure out what's going to be life going to be like that at 70 at 75 or 80. like i said i go back to this we still haven't talked about long-term care yet and that's something that's really scary thought i mentioned this many years ago that caregiving is going to be, biggest, be the biggest financial and social problem we're going to face this century already we as you know millions of people are are caregiving for somebody you've had alzheimer's come on talk about their their in their world of documented people right now between depending on you talk to 28 to 29,000 people that have documented that has dementia alzheimer's in the state of hawaii the scary number is that from what we understand 50 percent of that of people don't even document it and there's not really talked to a doctor about that so that means as close to 60 people right now that probably have Alzheimer's dementia, if we can use that 50% figure. The problem was that in the next five to seven years, that number is going to probably double as well. So looking at over 100,000 people going to have that disease. And it's a long-term disease. It's something you have to think long-term. You know, a passive age of 85 is nearly 50% chance you're going to get some form of uh, dementia. It's something that's a scary thought. So lifestyle, stay healthy, eat healthy. It does cost a little bit more to eat organic, um, eat vegetables. Uh, if you like to keep on eating out, we need to understand, will I have enough money to maintain our lifestyle? You know, it's really key because I see people quite often can't travel anymore. They don't go to Vegas. They cut down on, on going out. I've had people explain that Medicare doesn't cover enough for my dentures and my, my fillings. So I have to save money for that. So this is basic standard living lifestyle that we have to kind of play into our future. And it's really important. Liquidity is, is, is another um, part of the three L's. Well, I have access to tax advantage money when I need it. In other words, you may have saved up in your stock portfolio, your, R, uh, your 401k, uh, your IRA. At 70 and a half, you take certain money out of your IRA, uh, out of some of your stocks and bonds, if you have to live on that. Will you be taxed when you pull that out or you sell it? It's really important. Uh, it's really important to understand that today, if you have a mortgage payment and you kept on refinancing, that, that mortgage is not deductible anymore. That law is passed in 2018. So when you do your taxes uh, for 2019, it's really important to understand you can't write off that mortgage interest. For the home equity line, you cannot write that off as well unless you use that equity line to do what's called substantial uh, improvements in your house. That's the tax code. So I'm not a CPA, so actually, actually a CPA or accountant or bookkeeper, uh, can I write off that mortgage interest because it's something that's going to affect many, many people. Maybe if you're retired, you're in a lower tax bracket, may not, maybe not so much, but it's really important to understand that. So just to give you a basic foundation of going forward when we start thinking about retirement planning and a reverse mortgage and even aging in place, we need to think about these things as a core way of thinking. And then now we'll go forward toward the reverse mortgage. So a lot of you that um, uh, may have heard about reverse mortgage, good or bad, um, you know, keep that on the side. I always tell people, walk in with a blank piece of paper. When you, unless you really understand reverse mortgages, really walk in with a blank piece of paper and build up because we tend to compare reverse mortgage to regular mortgages. And it's really not a w great way to do that. Uh, when I first started this business in 2002, I had a small inkling of what the reverse mortgage is. All I knew was that if I got a mortgage, I wouldn't have to make a mortgage payment. That's really all I knew. All the rest will kind of cover a little bit. And just to let, give you a forewarning, we can't cover all of this in this segment. So you can reach out to me, email me, call me, text me. If you want more information, I can email you information. It is really hard, I have to be honest with you. It's really, really hard to read online about how the reverse mortgage works. And I'll be honest with you, there's very few people in the state of Hawaii that only do and only specialize on reverse mortgage. I can guesstimate probably less than five people in the state uh, specify, uh, specialize in reverse mortgages. Um, most people are mortgage people. They don't understand aging as well. So they're there to sell you the reverse mortgage. I'm here to educate you. If you decide to do that, you give me a call. If not, I won't be bothering you at all. So. We'll kind of go over how they work and the uses and benefits of that. So reverse mortgage for, the, for 
about 95 to 96 percent of in the industry in the world in the history of or in the united states at least are government insured loans it's 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 a loan that started in 1989 that was designed to help seniors stay in the home age in place and they knew that most of their wealth would be in the equity of their home so it was a way they thought that you could pull out some of your equity to live in your home comfortably and by providing you a monthly income. Even though it was always a line of credit, back in the day, up until probably early 2000, when I got in business, almost everybody took monthly income. So we'll cover that a little bit later on because the reverse mortgage is a pool of money you qualify for and you take it out monthly or whenever you want or leave it in a line of credit where there's what's called a great credit line growth rate added to that. So we'll talk about that. It is what's called non-recourse there. That's an unusual word. Non-recourse means the only recourse we have is the home. In other words, if you take out a bunch of money and you don't pay it back for 30 years, all the reverse mortgage is deferred interest. So the interest that you're not paying will add on to the balance as, and over time, that mortgage balance will go up. A lot of people don't realize or maybe don't take advantage of that you can pay back that, amount, that reverse mortgage interest every month if you want to. If you go to Vegas, win $10,000. You can pay that down to the reverse mortgage. So uh, it's very, a lot of benefit to that. The fund you pull out is non-taxable. Okay? So uh, for, for tax people, for financial advisors, you know, instead of pulling money out of your 401k or stocks bonds, it's non-taxable. But talk to your consult, consult with your tax specialist as always. So you can use the funds for whatever way you want. Like I said, either monthly income, you take it out once a year, or uh, whenever you want, you know, you're gonna buy a new car, you're gonna travel more, um, for whatever you want. It's not tax deductible. We can't tell you not to use it. So it's, it's a great way to, to plan out your future. And like I said, the line of credit sits there and is essentially a line of credit like any line of credit out in the marketplace today. The difference is it's guaranteed to you. They can never take it away. Uh, there's no prepayment penalties. And that credit line grows. So for, for a lot of people that don't understand how we qualify you, it, it's a little bit complicated. We base it off the interest rate. We base it off the value. And base it off the youngest borrower, age of the borrower. Because we know the younger person will live longer than the older person. So we use statistics. We use actuary tables to kind of plan out or futurize what we think the reverse mortgage is going to be. And so we minimize the risk. So uh, it's, it's hard to say how much you can borrow, but if we have to use round number of sakes. Let's just say your house is worth 600,000. You're 70 years old. You're going to have access to close to 700,000 in a reverse mortgage. Uh, you can go online or you can go to my website. You can go to different various places. Um, you can find out how much you can qualify for. If not, just email me, text me, call me, say, hey, I'm 70 years old, I have a $700,000 home, and if you have a mortgage balance, let me know that. So it's really important to let me know that. The line of credit is guaranteed and grows over time. So that's the key. If you don't need money now, and you have a line of credit, let's say $300,000, in 10 years, that's gonna be about 400 dollars to 450000 in a line of credit that can never be taken away from you there's a government guaranteed uh, line of credit. And the key thing is it grows over time. So when we're talking about, like I said, when you're talking about planning out your future to 70, 75, 80, 90 years old, that's is what the line of credit grows. In fact, when I first saw this, I asked my manager on the mainland, I said, why would we give them more money over time? Wouldn't it create more risk to us, to the lender? And he said, no, it's a government insured loan. So it ensures you that your line of credit is there as long as you pay their property tax, homeowner insurance, and upkeep the home like any other mortgage, it's guaranteed you can stay there for the rest of your life without being foreclosed upon because you never have to make a mortgage payment. So that's, that's what the beauty of the reverse mortgage. Um, so when you sell the home, a lot of people worry about, well, personally, when I die, what happens? When you, when you pass away, if there's any equity in the home left over, that you sell the house, pay off the mortgage balance plus the interest that you didn't pay and the rest is yours. If for some reason, you know, let's say I've done loans in Arizona and in Nevada where the market tanked in the late 2000s, market went down from 500,000 to 200,000 and literally six months to a year I've seen. And what happens, the mortgage balance will go higher 
than the value of the home. This is what's called non-recourse. Basically, if the mortgage balance was higher than the value, then basically you walk away. The lender would take over the, the property, sell it, and basically you walk away. The, the bank or more, HUD cannot come after you for any bank accounts, uh, savings accounts, IRA, stocks, bond, life insurance, or property you own. Cannot go after your heirs who's supposed to inherit the property. So that negative balance is washed away, and HUD will take care of that balance, the negative balance. So it's a great way to be able to guarantee you can stay in a home for the rest of your life um, for all the borrowers. So common uses of the reverse mortgage. Let me know, Mop, if you have any questions, because some of you may not – may it's hard to ask questions if you don't know really know what to ask. But a lot of times you have to really look at um, uh, thinking about what's life going to be like down the road. So it's really important to look at that. So we're just checking to see if there's any questions. So no questions yet. But anyway, if you do, please go ahead. I, I can answer most of your questions. I've been doing this a long time. So basically what people use a reverse mortgage for is to consolidate debt. A lot of times car loans, student loans, um, uh, get, rid of that, get rid of that mortgage payment. Uh, extra income. So a lot of times, like I said, a lot of people are – uh, living on Social Security only, and it may not be enough to supplement the monthly income. You can take monthly income, any amount you want, and every month you get a statement and you, so you know how much is left in your line of credit so you can plan out your future that way. It's really used today as a retirement planning tool. Um, I work uh, almost exclusively with financial advisors and estate planning attorneys. Um, it's something that we have to plan out down the road because if you're working with a financial advisor, hopefully they're what's doing what's called life planning. So I call it the holistic planning, where planning to one of you pass away and your remaining spouse pass away. It's something to really start planning that way because things are going to happen over time. And besides retirement planning and income, you really have to look at long-term care needs. Um, I have uh, I've just received two articles from Harvard that studied debt as we get older. And it's really a big problem because more people than not are going to have mortgage debt or consumer debt or student loan from the parent, from the kids who they co-sign for that they're being obligated to. And it's really important to understand cash flow. That's why the reverse mortgage is really slowly emerging and both to be a, a go-to product because, like I said, most people's wealth is in the equity of the home. So something to take a look at. Talk to your financial advisor. Uh, I've trained probably – two to 300 financial advisors in the state. There's still a lot of them that don't understand the reverse mortgage. It's really hard to even understand the reverse mortgage in this one session. So it's something to really start um, thinking about. I have a question. question. Um, so someone is asking, what happens if I don't pay my property related expenses or don't maintain my home? So maintaining your home is first of all, all mortgages by the way have that. It's, it's, it's inside the mortgage doctrine. Now, are they going to go out and check out your home? Probably not, but it is a requirement, I have to tell you. Property tax is important. Like anything else, it has to be paid on. If You can be foreclosed upon that. Um, if you have a hard income, monthly income or annual income to pay that, what we do now, we can actually set aside money from your line of credit in a pool of money where we can guarantee that we'll pay that for you for the rest of your life. So we're going to set aside money based on the life expectancy and – property tax and insurance or both, which I would recommend, especially if you have someone that's getting older that maybe have memory issues, it's guaranteed that we'd be paid out of that, out of that pool of money. So it's something that uh, I would highly recommend if you're thinking about that might be an issue down the road, especially for spouses. When one spouse passed away, you lose more than 50% of your income a lot of times. Also, they did really good retirement planning tool uh, planning it's really understanding when one spouse passed away, because it's inevitably going to happen, what's left over to pay that property tax. Uh, about 10% of the, of, the, of the industry now of borrowers are being foreclosed upon right now because they cannot pay their property tax or their insurance or both. You know, Hawaii has the lowest property tax in the country, bar none. I was just in Omaha, Nebraska, meeting our Nebraska people. I was in Portland a couple months ago, LA and Phoenix. And we had the lowest in the country, by far. By, and I, I'm not saying it's good for consumers, us, us homeowners, but it's not good for economy. I mean, our, our state budget, because a lot of people's budget goes to help pay for things around our state. Um, 
Homeowner's insurance is one of the lowest in the country as well. However, when you add on hurricane insurance, we're about middle of the pack. But we are very good on the property tax. Uh, people use the reverse mortgage for remodeling, uh, which is which is we see quite a bit. Um, when we did a survey uh, in 2008, the number one reason why people are using reverse mortgage was health care and long-term care. It is prescriptions. Um, and it's something that we, you know, it's amazing how many people uh, uh, still look at this uh, as something that pay for long-term care. It is very, very expensive. Average cost of a care home, 7000 to 10000 Skilled nursing, 12000 to 14000 uh, home care, you can get, depending on which agency you go through, how many hours, you're looking at probably 3000 or 5000 per month. Um, I recommend anybody have cash reserves. It's really important. Uh, I've had many, many people, house burned down or part of house burned down, you, somebody steals your car, you have to have cash immediately. So uh, it's really important to have. Uh, travel and recreation is huge. Uh, about five, six years ago, uh, you they changed the reverse mortgage product where you can actually buy a home now. So let's say you downside, you sell your house for 600,000, it was free and clear. In total time, you'll take that 600,000 and pay cash for a new place. Well, that's great to do, we have no mortgage payment, but you've tied up a lot of cash in that home. So the new thinking today is you can put down 40 to 50%, maybe 60% if you're only 62, purchase a condo or a house, and we can finance the rest that we can, you can save some reserves. Uh, you can still make mortgage payments like a regular mortgage if you want to. If not, don't worry about making a mortgage payment. And it really comes down to quality of life. So reverse mortgage basically is a government loan. We use the acronym HECM, H-E-C-M, Home Equity Conversion Mortgage. And it's just a unique loan mortgage that allows people over 62 to take out funds or get rid of your mortgage payment without having to make mortgage payments a lot, of, a lot of things people don't realize, you retain, retain the title to the house in your name or your revocable trust. Now, hopefully someday you'll have a legal guy come on because revocable trust is becoming an issue that maybe back in the day wasn't, wasn't a necessarily a bad idea, but there was reasons why they did it. But today uh, we're seeing you can't qualify for Medicaid right now if it's in an irrevocable trust. And you can't qualify for any kind of mortgage, by the way, if it's in an irrevocable trust. So somebody take a look at that. Uh, the guideline is 62. However, if there's one bar less than that, it's okay. They changed the law several years ago, thanks to ARP that fought that. And now, as long as one of you are over 62, you can qualify for reverse mortgage. Um, you have to be married. That's the only caveat. Um, so you have to understand that. Eligibility has to be your primary residence. Uh, in the past, up to three years ago, we never talking about income or credit. Today we do, and that's the new reverse mortgage. We have to have enough income to pay the property tax and the insurance, um, and also have a little bit of residual income to pay for basic necessities. So that's another conversation as well. The responsibility, basically, like I said, you have to pay the property tax, homeowner insurance, uh, the maintenance fees. So like I said, the benefit, what we call benefit, how much you can borrow, is based off the age of the youngest borrower, Praise value and the current interest rates. Now, the product chosen is different ways to take out the money, so that's why it's a product chosen. So that's a whole other conversation as well. So Mapu is going to let me know how much time we have left because I will try to get into it as much as possible, but maybe not. Yeah. Okay. So, like I said, a com combination of the benefits here, you can take it lump sum, which I don't recommend unless you really need it, and you have a big mortgage payment to get rid of the payment. But I don't recommend that because if you take money out immediately, we're gonna start calculating interest on that whole big amount. So don't recommend it unless you really need the money or you have a big mortgage payment. Uh, monthly payments, uh, you can take monthly payments, whether it's a thousand bucks a month, 500 bucks a month, or uh, you want it for the rest of your life. So we use the actuarial table if you want income for the rest of your life. You know, most people, I'll have to be honest with you, don't do that today. It is an option. The only reason why I say that is that as long as you're taking care of your long-term care needs, as long as you're taking care of emergency funds you may need, because if you guarantee the monthly income, we do lock up that line of credit. So you have no line of credit. Now you can cancel at any time, but what you do is that if you, if you lock up the line of credit, there's no credit line growth rate. So like I said, 
on a three hundred thousand dollar mortgage, if you take out all that one time, that'll double in about twelve to fourteen to fifteen years, depending on what the interest rate is. But it also goes the same as your line of credit. The line of credit grows just as fast as the about your debt that you have. The reason why is that your credit line growth rate grows by the interest rate we charge you. So same thing, what we're gonna charge you every month is what we're gonna grow that line of credit. So one of the smartest things people do today is to set up a line of credit now. They don't need it, don't touch it. If you don't use a reverse mortgage line of credit, you're not charging any interest. And all it does, it grows over time. So that's a plan that I am personally looking forward to down the road. Um, to look at that using it as a basically a nest egg, uh, emergency fund, and a way to maybe pay for long-term care, even though I have long-term care insurance. So that's another topic that you might want to cover down the road is long-term care insurance. So that's the receiving a benefit. So the reverse mortgage is a government loan. And when people talk about all these things that happen with the government loan, it's not the product itself. It's the people using the product that's caused all these issues. And you've seen it in the newspaper recently about people getting in trouble, people misusing it. It's not the product itself. This was designed in 1989 after several years of reviewing the product. And now we've had more changes in the reverse mortgage industry in the last probably three to four years than we've ever had in this industry. All for consumer safeguards. One of the things that they did several years ago was put in place before you can even apply for the reverse mortgage, you have to talk to a third party counselor, an FHA HUD approved counselor to explain what the reverse mortgage is because not every loan officer can explain it to you properly, explain to you how the, what, what's a, what the reverse mortgage is, the closing costs, that's a non-recourse loan. And actually, when you sign the mortgage document when you close, there's actually a document that says you never have to repay this loan at all. Now, obviously, somebody has to pay it down the road, the heirs, but the reality is, you know, people, here we are today, here's the end of life. People always worry about what my kids get, which is understandable. But I really worry about here, what goes on before you pass away, before your spouse passes away, what that life's going to be like. So it's really important to understand that. Now, the title still stays in your name or your revocable trust as long as you have a reverse mortgage. Uh, like I said, counseling is mandatory before application. And an equity line cannot be canceled frozen or reduced to you no matter what happens, pay the maintenance fee. And this has nothing to do with the property value. So if you ever live in an area where the value hasn't gone up or all these new homes building around you and your house is still the same house built in 1950 or 60, the value hasn't gone up as much as you would like or hope for, but your line of credit still grows no matter what happens. Every month you get a statement showing you what's left over in your line of credit. It also shows you what's outstanding and it shows you every month what the amount of interest we're gonna charge you. And because it's a government loan, there's also a little bit of mortgage insurance. That insurance is what guarantees that you can stay in the home for the rest of your life without being foreclosed upon. I've had calls from people on the mainland, not so much here, but people on the mainland saying, my house is now worth less than my mortgage balance. What happens now? I say, well, as long as you pay the property tax and your homeowner's insurance, you can stay in Sorry about that. Uh, do we have the picture here? Share screen. Audio's on. There you are. Okay. Put up the screen. Sorry about that. Are we here? Is that showing now? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, Will, could, so like I said, uh, if you have questions, you can email me, call me, or just type it in here. Number one big myth still happens to this day. I've even, I've even trained attorneys at the Bar Association. They still ask me, does Leonard keep title to the property? We never keep title to the property. It always stays in your name or your revocable trust. You guys always own the home. So that's a mis misbelief. Uh, it's amazing how many people still believe that and all the misinformation out there and how you tell a story and down the road, it changes over time. The funds received from reverse mortgage are taxed. It is not taxable. The ask your accountant is non-taxable event. That's really a beauty of the product. Uh, is it risky? Uh, and the funds are guaranteed if something happens to a lender. The reverse mortgage is guaranteed to you. If the lender goes down, how do it take over the loan? Guaranteed the money, guaranteed the growth rate of the line of credit. 
Uh, that's the beauty of the product. Um, servicing is done every month. So you get a monthly statement, which will tell you what the balance is and how much your line of credit is. That's really, really important. Myth number four, there are, the borrower can end up owing more than the home is value is worth. It possibly could happen, but today we don't give you more than probably 60% of the value if maybe you're 80 something years old. But at 62 year old, you only get about 42 to 43%. Depends on the interest rate, so don't quote me on that. So it does vary. Uh, and any value over 700,000, we have to take a closer look at because HUD has a limit. We do have a jumbo product that lends up to $6 million. I'm actually meeting a client right after this um, that he wants to pull out more money. So on a $700,000 home, I've never seen a balance mortgage over 450,000. I think it was 98 years old, I think he was. Um, so we don't give you all the, all the value. On a jumbo loan, we give you between 33 and 45% of the value um, through my experience. I've never done a loan for a 90 year old, five year old, 100 year old person, but they probably get a little bit more. But um, it is something that we have to be care take a look at, a closer look at. Myth number five, when the reverse mortgage becomes due, either the lender takes or sells a home or heirs lose their inheritance. No, heirs will receive whatever left over in the home once it's sold. Um, typically they'll sell it. Or you can refinance the balance depending what the balance is. But if it's sold, you pay off the balance that you borrowed plus interest and the rest you keep. If the balance, the mortgage balance is higher than the value, just call the lender up, give the keys to the lender, say, I'll see you guys later. And they will sell the house and pay the lender off the balance. So it's what's called a non-recourse loan. Myth number six, if a borrower outlives their life expectancy, the lender can kick them out of their home. No, believe it or not, when I first started, I, I, I'm, I'm a researcher, I do a lot of reading. The document on the mortgage that you sign, it actually, when I first started, every mortgage I would close, it would be a different date of expiration. I couldn't figure that out. It's like 2070, 2080, what that date is on your mortgage document is a date that you turn 150 years old. Yes, the reverse mortgage document is until you reach 150 years old. So we don't know 10, 20, 30 years from now, you know, if you, if Mapu is still around and she's legally alive in this little thing of water, which this is a big thing of water, by the way, <laughs> is you can legally still keep the reverse mortgage going. So that's a unique, unique fact, by the way, 150 years old. So you can never outlive that. If you do expend all your funds, you can still stay there. You just you have no reason, you have no line of credit left. Now there is a possibility sometimes, depending on when you got the reverse mortgage, uh, the reason why I say that was lending limits go up over time. So depending on when you got the reverse mortgage, you can refinance and get more funds. That is a possibility for a unique situation, however. You can never out, you never can get out of the reverse mortgage. That's a good one. You can always get out of reverse mortgage. There's no prepayment penalty. You can sell the house at any time. You can refinance at any time uh, to regular mortgage. Uh, there's no prepayment penalty. So you can sell it. There's no minimum term to keep the reverse mortgage. So reverse mortgage can impact my Social Security and Medicare benefits. It has no effect on Social Security and Medicare benefits at all. It may affect MedQuest, Medicaid. So that's another specific conversation. Call me on. I can help you with that. You can buy a home, oh, 2009 we started that. You can buy a home now by putting less down payment and getting reverse mortgage to cover the mortgage balance difference. So yeah, uh, you can call me anytime. You can let me know what you need uh, to have. Uh, my contact info, like I said, it'll be, it's being changed right now as we speak to Mutual of Alma Mortgage. My number is still the same, 808-234-3117. Call or text me. If you text or text me, uh, let me know who your name is because I don't really respond to people. You need to probably call me because I got scammed a couple of times where they text me and said, hey, I need your help. And it was a scam. Uh, my email will be changing over uh, very shortly, probably in about by Monday. It'll be peihara at mutualmortgage.com. Currently, I just use Percy Ihara at Hotmail. Uh, my MLS number is there. Um, but yeah, I'm... I'm pretty versed in all these topics on aging and it's something important to really uh, uh, find somebody that's had, that's experienced enough on a reverse mortgage. So Mop one, any questions? Yes. I'm looking through um, the chat box now, but if anybody does have questions, please send it in the chat box um, and we can get it answered right now. 
Um, and whatever you have questions for, I'm sure other people may have. So don't be shy to ask any questions. Um, here's a question. It says, what if I am already in default? If you're already in foreclosure, um, we have to take a closer look at that. Uh, we can, I've disclosed one uh, last month. They were, in, they were foreclosed on their mortgage and actually their maintenance fees. Uh, we'll be able to pull them out of that uh, successfully. And the reason why is that they had enough equity in the home. So as long, as long as you have enough equity in the home, um, so in this specific situation, they had enough equity where we, we required them to set aside money for their property tax and homeowner insurance. That was really important because that's the biggest thing HUD worries about, our lender worries about. So as long as you have an equity left over. Um, otherwise, I would tell you, talk to a realtor, talk to a financial advisor, talk to an attorney about maybe selling it and downsizing. Um, so it is still possible. We don't look at a FICO score, by the way. We do look at credit report. But we don't look at a FICO score because we know everybody has a story. There may be a reason, especially for health issues, why you may be, nobody wants to be in foreclosure. So that's the reason why we will take a closer look at that. Awesome. Um, so this question's a little lengthy, but um, you talked about the obligations earlier. Having a reverse mortgage, you're required to pay for property-related expenses, maintain property's condition and such. What if I don't meet my reverse mortgage obligations? So what are my options? Yeah, so essentially, uh, they'll, they'll seek this foreclosure process. And it's like any other mortgage, by the way. Uh, we're seeing actually an increase in bankruptcy filings today. Uh, it was up 5%, I believe, to, over, last, over last year. Uh, we're seeing, we're, I think you're going to see more foreclosures coming forward because uh, maintenance fees are going up. There's actually, the, I see a bigger growth in, in foreclosure, on, uh, I'm sorry, uh, in condominiums because they're unable to pay their maintenance fees. We're seeing so many uh, associations foreclosing on people because they haven't paid their maintenance fee. I can tell you, I know two people, so... You want to plan ahead. The flow, if you're in foreclosure, it's not going to go away. So seek out advice right away, either a realtor that's experienced, by the way, uh, or, or you can call me or talk to a financial advisor. This is one of the designations I got recently. It's a certified senior advisor. We specialize in aging. It's actually uh, out of the country. There's 4,000 designations for realtors, financial advisors, attorneys, CPAs, and only 10% are accredited. In other words, a third party reviewed the curriculum and the test. And they didn't do the class to teach you how to pass the test. That's one of the key things. Uh, the CSA is the only one in our, in our in the financial industry that's what's called double accredited. There's only two accredited agencies in the country. And this designation, CSA, is double accredited. So if you work with seniors, you might want to take this course. It's an excellent course. It's a very difficult test. But it's well worth it. Um, here's the Wall Street Journal. Let me see if I can get to it. And it goes. The Wall Street Journal article here on reverse mortgage. Why reasons why retirees should consider reverse mortgage, and it's a pretty lengthy article. If you email me, I can send this to you, or just email Mapu or HP. I can send this to you. I can also send you the Harvard um, uh, article that they did a study on retirement planning and how the biggest problem today is people retiring with, with debt with mortgages. So it's something to really plan for. Um, you know, unless we smoke and drink a lot, we're not going to die right away. Uh, I bought long-term care insurance recently uh, from my company, by the way, before I even knew they bought us. I just found the best product, and it was Mutual of Omaha. But there are various products out there. Uh, I have a standalone long-term care insurance policy. Some people might even want to have a life insurance policy with a long-term care rider. Uh, they may have annuities with a rider on there. So seek out somebody that has a lot of experience, not somebody that just says they sell long-term care insurance, but somebody who's actually planned uh, I've always said this, that if you're working with a financial advisor and they don't talk to you about long-term care, uh, I would tell you, change your financial advisor because most financial advisors want to get you to retirement and want to get you an invest, but they have to have you coming down the hill when you're retirement. Come, I call coming down the hill and in retirement and really need to um, understand how to finance long-term care. Like I said earlier in the, in the, in the webinar, long-term care and caregiving is going to be, be the biggest social and financial problem. We've already seen lawsuits. You see in a paper uh, with families suing each other for money, um, suing, suing each other for power. Um, and the family needs to come together to start really planning that out for their parents. Um, but anyway, if nobody has any more questions, um, we can finish up here. 
Um, and it's something that I appreciate the time. Thanks to Mapug navigating me here and there uh, on a reverse mortgage. Oh, oh, the sound went off. Can see now. Can I hear anything? What happened? Oh, we're good now. Okay, sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, sorry so about, sorry yeah. about that. Yeah, when the, uh, the 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 internet went down, took down the audio too, and I think we have to click it on. So, but anyway, yeah, you can just forward any questions you have. I've been doing this a long time. I've won a thousand senior clients. Uh, I'm a CSA. I also got my designation in, in CLTC, Certificate in Long Term Care. So I specialize in that. I don't charge for counseling, by the way. And I'd probably be the first one to tell you the reverse mortgage is not good for you. Because when I alluded to planning, we do aging in place planning. So we got to find out how you're going to stay in your home for the rest of your life. And then for, one, for couples, when one spouse passes away, what's the plan? We got to have, start having a plan in place. And if you have children, I can counsel the children. And we, I usually recommend when we do the reverse mortgage, your children are there. So they understand who I am, what the product is, good and bad. Uh, and there is a possibility they may get less money. But a lot of times, that's not an issue for them. They want mom and dad to be able to uh, stay at home for the rest of their life. Uh, but it's just something that I've been engrossed in for so many years. And when, we, when we're all in this aging field, we really, have, really, really have need to understand how to get education out there, the knowledge out there. So these are really great. Uh, my website, generations808.com, has a lot of information. Our past radio shows. So um, I thank you for your time. So, yes, thank you so much, Percy, for being here today. Uh, sorry for the light. In this, my office here, the light's not the greatest for to film this thing. So, Yeah, I'm going to invest in a lighting system for next year. <laughs> uh, but before you go, I do have a few things I wanted to let you know about, um, specifically what's coming up. So on December 19th, we will have Katie. I'm not sure if it's Rani or Rainy, probably Rainy. But she will be joining us to speak about engaging in difficult conversations with family. Um, and I don't know how to do that. So it will be interesting for me to listen to her speak about that. I primarily service children and older adults um, with cognitive impairments. Um, not saying that family caregivers have cognitive impairments. It's just that that generation or that age group is what I'm lacking. So it'll be educational for me. Um, other than that, December 19th, next year, on January 23rd, um, we have our first general membership meeting. So we will be joined by two organizations, Catholic Charities and hopefully Caregiver Foundation. They'll be speaking on caregiving support and resources. Um, so look forward to that. Members are invited. So if you're not a member yet, um, please become one. Very reasonable. Yeah, it's a very reasonable price, especially if you're Kupuna. We do welcome Kupuna, not just healthcare professionals, but pretty much anybody um, interested in learning more about our geriatric, or I should say, older community. I got to find a nice way to say that. But on January 30th, we will have our first of 2020 uh, webinar, which will feature Debbie Kim Morikawa talking about fitness after 50. So balance and strength training, what you can do, what you shouldn't do. Um, I think she will either bring in somebody else or use me as an example. And we'll be doing exercises in live time so that you could even follow along at home um, so that you can ask questions. Why is my arm hurting when I'm doing this exercise and things of that sort. So January 30th, um, last Friday, sorry, last Thursday of every month. Um, and the last thing I wanted to let you know is that we are always accepting membership. Right now, we're already open for 2020. So if you want to get on that train and already join or renew your membership. Conference year. Next year is our conference year. We do it biennially, so every other year. Um, and in 2020, the theme is 2020 vision. Um, not just saying that we'll be talking about the eyes throughout this whole conference, but just looking forward into the future. Um, 2020 vision, having that foresight, like Percy says, planning now for later on is always important. So if you are a member in 2020, we do offer um, discounts for attendance to our conferences, as well as general membership meetings are free for members. Um, we have our newsletter that we send out to our members um, that doesn't just include Oahu resources. It also encompasses outer islands. Uh, recently in our newsletter, we had the senior, 
what is it, caregiving conference on Maui. So that's this Friday, I believe, November 22nd. Um, and it's pretty reasonably priced as well at the super nice hotel, Wailea. But other than that, uh, that's all I have for you folks today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and I look forward to you becoming a member. <laughs> all right. Have a great day. Bye.